Hi, my name is Dr. Ray Pastor, and today I'm going to show you how to actually take Captivate and use a button to control your movie. So your movie just stops playing and actually doesn't require these controls at the bottom of the screen. I can get rid of them, and you have to use a button to click to the next screen. Okay, very easy to do. So let's open up Captivate. We're going to go to File, New Project, and I'm just going to create a blank project here. And you can see you can change your own sizes and everything, but I'm just going to keep it at what my default is set here. So I'm going to create this blank project. And the first thing that I'm going to do once it creates is I'm going to create a few slides um, just so that we have some interactivity. Maybe I'll put something on each of these. I'll call this one like slide one, create a new slide, just a blank slide and a blank slide. Insert some text here, call this one slide two, call text, just say slide three. Just so we can see for the example what slide we're actually on. So you have slide one, slide two, slide three. All right, so now we're gonna insert buttons and we're gonna control this movie with buttons. All right, so I am gonna go to interactions, button, it's going to just automatically drop a button on the screen. I usually, you know, will, you can change the text of your button by clicking on it. We're not going through that. You can play around and learn how they actually use the buttons, like change their features in another video. But all that I'm doing here is I'm showing you how to control your movie with one. All right, so you can see that what I just talked about is the style, you know, but I'm going to go to actions. So if you're not there, make sure your button is selected. You click properties up the top if you need to. We're going to go to actions. You're simply going to just say, go to the next slide. I could also say, go to the last slide visited, open a URL, jump to a certain slide, um, execute a JavaScript command. I can have it do a number of different things. I'm just going to simply have this one play on the next slide. There are also some options, like I can add audio and stuff like that. You know, change the, the text font and everything of that nature. Um, these are more for controlling, like, if I want it to do something else, like control a quiz or something. Um, and they have infinite attempts, which means that they can click this button, you know, if they miss it or something or whatever. I just keep that by default. But this will go to the next slide. Then I can do the same thing on this. I'm going to go to Interactions, Button. This one will go to the next slide. I can also create another button. And on this one in my Actions, I can say... Go to the last slide visited. Or I can have it jump to a slide or do whatever. So right now, if I control this movie, if we go and play it, I'm going to go to preview HTML5 in browser. And we're going to get to see it controlled. Now watch what happens. My movie doesn't automatically go to slide two. It still plays down here because I have it set so that it's going to still play. But in order to go to the next screen... So if I click this button, it'll go to slide three. That one will go back to slide one. And that's how you control your movie. Now, what you want to look at is down here, controlling this timeline. Here is the actual, so here we're on slide two. Here is the actual actions. So you can see that my movie actually pauses after this three seconds. So if I get out of the properties and I'm at my actual you know, I'm in here. I can actually go into my timeline. Let's go back in here. Timing, how long it's displayed for, pause after 1.5 seconds. So I can change that pause because right now my movies, so if I had like an animation going, I might want it to be longer than that, you know. And I might actually change the timing of my whole slide to be longer than three seconds. I could change it to, you know, 10 seconds. So right now my slide is now 10 seconds, but my button is even is only on the screen for three. So I would have to extend the timeline. And just as I can extend it down here, I probably, maybe I need to extend the pause. Maybe the pause needs to be at the very end. But this controls how much of the movie will play. And let's actually preview this just so you can see. I don't have an animation on the screen, so it doesn't make it as exciting. Let's go, it's on the next screen. Watch how long it plays compared to the other. You can see if there was an animation or something, it would continue to go, but you still can't advance to the next screen without using the buttons. And that's how you do it. Thank you.